بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Uh, we will discuss now uh, uh, a new topic uh, in interventional radiology uh, for uh, treatment of uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia. Uh, uh, normal prostate, uh, uh, usually uh, the urethra passing uh, freely through uh, the prostatic tissue, when uh, it enlarges, uh, usually at age of uh, 50, uh, it compresses the urethra and uh, results in uh, lower urethract symptoms. Uh, treatment of benign prostatic hyperplasia uh, is uh, through uh, catheterization in uh, a case of urinary retention and uh, by surgical procedures, the gold standard is transurethral resection of the prostate. Uh, may be uh, by prostatic uh, uh, laser surgery or uh, by steam therapy. Uh, new interventional techniques uh, are available now as uh, prostatic artery embolization and uh, recently uh, the uh, transperineal laser operation. Uh, the standard uh, treatment uh, is through the transurethral approach. Uh, uh, so uh, so uh, uh, some drawbacks may occur uh, uh, due to uh, general or spinal anesthesia. Uh, uh, post uh, procedure may uh, the patient have uh, has hematuria structure, got retention, uh, retrograde ejaculation, uh, some incontinence. Uh, therefore, minimal invasive uh, techniques uh, uh, such as prostatic artery embolization and the transperineal ablation uh, have uh, evolved. Uh, transperineal uh, laser ablation uh, is through uh, introduction of uh, a small uh, needle uh, uh, using uh, a guiding system. Uh, and uh, an, uh, a machine that uh, generate uh, uh, low energy uh, under interface uh, to produce coagulative uh, necrosis uh, in the prostate. Uh, the uh, procedure may be done under local anesthesia or uh, the patient may have uh, the need for uh, light sedation. Uh, the prosthetic uh, laser ablation uh, works uh, through a volumetric reduction of the gland uh, by uh, site reduction uh, or uh, may be used uh, as uh, an uh, uh, emerging uh, treatment for uh, prosthetic uh, malignant tumor, but it is still under trials. In this case, we can see the lesion in the peripheral zone, and uh, it may be done using laser ablation, but it is still under trial. Uh, we usually use a three-way full scatter to control the urethral uh, temperature to avoid urethral injury. Uh, planning of the treatment using transrectal uh, approach, and uh, we give local anesthesia uh, in the uh, periprostatic uh, plexus. Uh, the patient may need uh, light contrast sedation. Uh, then anesthetize the skin with uh, lidocaine, uh, and we introduce uh, one or two fibers in each uh, side uh, beside the urethra and uh, ablate using uh, 1800 joule with uh, a 3 watt uh, per fiber. Uh, if the prostate is uh, large, uh, uh, then uh, expected we can use a pullback technique uh, to induce more coagulative necrosis. Uh, dexamethasone uh, is usually used uh, after the procedure to uh, reduce the edema and pain relief therapy uh, as it is uh, a painful uh, technique after the procedure. Uh, we plan the, uh, the uh, technique uh, using transrectal approach in the axial plane and longitudinal plane 
using the interface. Uh, and this is the urethra where the Foley's caster is seen here and the uh, balloon uh, within the bladder and uh, it identifies the bladder neck. We should avoid the urethra and the bladder neck. Uh, this is the biplane probe attached to each, uh, the guiding system. Uh, through it, we insert uh, the uh, sheep and needle. And we should remember that the ablation is about uh, one and a half centimeter in front of the tip of the fiber and about seven millimeter around the fiber. And it is uh, uh, eight millimeter on each side of the uh, fiber. Uh, in the axial plane, we should ensure that the uh, needle fiber is, is uh, more than 8 millimeter from the urethra on each side and uh, more than 8 millimeter from the uh, prostate capsule. Uh, on the, uh, sagittal, on the uh, sagittal plane, we can see the needle tip of the uh, Sheba needle and the fiber tip. Uh, the fiber tip will ablate one and a half centimeter in front of the uh, needle uh, fiber tip. So uh, the distance should be more than one and a half uh, centimeter from the uh, uh, bladder neck. Uh, the interface calculates the ablation zone, and uh, if uh, the ablation zone is uh, small for the large size prostate, we can use uh, additional uh, fiber to uh, induce more coagulated necrosis uh, and should avoid the uh, bladder neck. Uh, when we start the laser ablation, uh, air bubbles will uh, result and uh, increasing with uh, time. Uh, this is a power doubler. Uh, this is uh, air bubbles in front of the needle. Air bubbles in front of two needles applied in the prostate. After uh, some time, we can uh, see the large uh, ablation zone. Uh, in front of the needle and surrounding the tip of the fiber. Um, how about um, we can, uh, if we can use uh, laser ablation in uh, prosthetic uh, cancer? This is a trial, this is a video uh, for uh, prosthetic cancer with uh, close proximity to the rectal wall, so uh, hydrodestriction. Uh, was used to uh, to put the uh, prostate away from the uh, rectal mucosa by this hydrosection. Then uh, planning of the uh, target by the interface, introduction of the needle through the guiding system. This is a uh, two needle and uh, should be uh, away from the bladder neck by one and, uh, one and a half uh, centimeter. Uh, and the laser uh, fiber uh, was introduced. During uh, the laser uh, energy delivery, uh, gas bubbles will appear, as we see here. We will do a pull pack technique to increase the ablation zone and deliver another cycle. This is the air bubble on the axial images.
Finally, removing the fiber, and this is a contrast enhanced ultrasound revealing uh, hypovascularity of the lesion. Uh, MRI was done before the uh, laser ablation. In this coronal uh, T2-weighted images, we can see uh, the uh, central uh, gland and uh, in this axial images. Uh, immediately after the procedure, this is the track and uh, hyper intensity uh, transformed to uh, low signal intensity due to fibrosis and uh, oh, sorry due to uh, hemorrhage and uh, in this axial uh, plane we can see uh, the hemorrhage in the uh, ablated area uh, follow up after uh, three months six months and uh, uh, 12 months uh, the site of the uh, cavity this is the coronal T2 weighted images, and this is the axial weighted images. Uh, we can see the cavity produced by the ablation in this axial, uh, it is well demonstrated. And after uh, six months, it uh, decreased in size, and after uh, 12 months, uh, the prostate volume is reduced by 51% uh, of its uh, original size. Uh, this is a uh, uh, follow-up for a cavity uh, after one month and uh, three months and 12 months. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, uh, at 10 months, clinical and MRI evaluation for uh, prostate laser ablation has dem demonstrated to be a safe and effective treatment for benign prostatic hyperplasia in selected patients who cannot tolerate uh, medical treatment or, or unfit for uh, many uh, invasive uh, procedures uh, due to limitation of anesthesia or uh, uh, elevated uh, creatin, uh, creatinine or uh, uh, other comorbidities. Uh, treatment is well tolerated with low morbidity uh, scores. Uh, uh, despite uh, some serious complication may occur if uh, the technique uh, uh, is not done in uh, appropriate way such as urethral or uh, capsular injury or even bladder neck injury. Uh, the patients uh, are discharged uh, shortly after the procedure under uh, steroid and uh, pain relief. Uh, so uh, the prostate uh, laser uh, Ablation is uh, safe and uh, evolving uh, interventional radiology technique for treatment of uh, prostatic hyperplasia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed. I know that the, your surgeon wants to ask you something, of course. Okay, we're waiting for the question. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, this is an example of an another uh, promising uh, uh, way of treating uh, benign prostatic hyperplasia and uh, I am sure uh, we are uh, as urologists we are always happy to find solutions for patients who are unfit for surgery so we are always welcoming uh, new techniques and new technologies for treating uh, the patients who are not fit for surgery and maybe uh, in the future when there are a lot of these patients. We can make uh, proper randomized controlled trials, and uh, then it will be in our guidelines uh, or in our guidelines of management uh, for the prostate. Uh, the best exam example of this is uh, angioembolization of uh, renal tumors. Uh, it is already a standard treatment, and it is in our guidelines, even though we as urologists, we don't perf perform it. Uh, the radiologists perform it. So uh, this is what I'm talking about in the future when there are a lot of uh, good uh, 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 randomized controlled trials. It will be in the guidelines of management of uh, benign prostatic uh, hyperplasia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hani, for your comments, and thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for the lecture. And really happy for to be have a cooperation between the surgeons and the radiologists for the best of the patients. And now I would like to uh, thank you all because we're going to close the session.